Hi there. Uh, hello from my island of strandedness in quarantine here in California. I'm trying to treat this whole thing like an artist retreat and getting a lot of kind of cool work done. Doing a class right now that uh, is online with people from all over the US and uh, Canada. Most of you found me here on YouTube, so I'm, I'm super excited about it and I will definitely run it again. That class is full. I wanted to talk to you today about how I created this painting. Um, not specifically this one, but this type of painting. I attempted the other day to uh, film my process and I didn't understand um, the angling of my camera. So it's, it's kind of twisted and contorted, but you'll get, you'll get some stuff out of it. And uh, that is a demo on how I am using oil and cold wax and also a mix of, I've been playing around to see how much this Reeves BFK paper can actually hold and it holds a ton. So I'm using what I've got and you know, little problems with this kind of paper is that as you can see on the sides, even though I taped it down, there's a little bit of oil leak. So it kind of, so I'm going to continue working on this piece. Uh, you'll see the first part of the video is very cut off. And hopefully as I tweak this one, um, you'll get a little bit more insight into my process. Because you can mount paper on board, you want to try to do what I'm not doing, which is keep the back of it clean. So here's a, here's a little trick. You can take some wax paper any wax paper and put it, glue it, I mean tape it down to your support and that'll keep, that'll keep the back of this nice and clean. Okay, if you like these videos please subscribe if you're interested in joining my next online class because I'm just going to keep doing these. Um, let me know, reach out, uh, questions in the comments, uh, come hang out with us in the community and uh, okay, let's get So I've sped this up a ton because I don't want you to have to go through too much watching of my process, but I'm using these stencils and just playing around. This is play stage. Stenciling in some color. I'm using some Fatalo blue because it's translucent over these first semi-dry layer of uh, oil and cold wax. This was a painting that I'd done a few months ago, so it was pretty dry. So using my brayer, using cold wax here only, so half oil, half cold wax, and just covering the whole surface, and coming in with my RNF pigment sticks, just making some marks. Throwing down, now I'm trying half, half mixture of galkide and cold wax. And I'm getting some really nice fluid paint. Um, and I'm just playing around with brush strokes on top of that first layer of pure cold wax over the semi-dry other layer of cold wax. And I'm, I'm doing value changes. So I'm going uh, light over dark dark over light. That's something that you can do when you're building up layers. But this is an experiment, a happy one, which was that, yes, you really can use fluid paint with your oil and cold wax. So I'm just going a little nuts here, playing around. And then I'm doing something that I was told that you can't do, which is use your brayer. But I thought it created an interesting surface and I'm just, just creating a great big huge mess here. And I don't, I'm not worried about it. We'll see what happens. It's kind of exciting to, just to be playing, especially when you're playing with paper because it's less expensive and you can throw it away. So now I'm, I am rubbing back everything that I just put on, knowing that it will still leave an interesting layer. 
um, that I can excavate, excavate backwards into. Now I'm throwing on some greens. Again, I'm using half gel guide, half cold wax so that it's fluid and I'm really treating it like painting rather than sort of that pure, typical cold wax style of brayer and half, half cold wax. I've got a floral theme in my mind. So I'm doing the same thing. I had a dark layer. I put the light layer. I, I wiped it back and now I'm, I'm coming back in with uh, lights. And if you want your lights to be very luminous, then sit them on top of dark layers and it'll just give them more depth and more brightness. I'm sorry that I pushed my board out of the frame, but you can still kind of get an idea of what I'm doing here using a big brush. To get movement. Scraping into it, putting lines down. This is kind of what I what I do in this phase. Seeing what's behind there. I remembered that there was that red, that pink. Pulling that back. And right now, when I look at it, it's a huge mess. But when I'm in my process, it's, it's like I'm five years old or seven years old playing with playing. And that's really the space that you need to get into of not being too precious, not caring, and it's that sort of aliveness and spontaneity that people respond to afterwards. So I kind of like the way that red is coming out and sitting next to the green. And then bringing in the yellow and putting it right over that still wet Fatalo blue is uh, the wet on wet is turning it into a really nice green. Scratching back. I'm working really fast. I mean, not as fast as you can see uh, in the sped up version, but I worked really fast. This came together in about 20 minutes. And this was a happy mistake. I just picked up some paint. Some of it was dry and it wound up being a really interesting shape. That purple uh, sort of floral thing to the side there. It, it wound up really looking pretty great and I kept it just as it was. So now things are starting to move and come together. I've noticed that the angle of the whole piece is a diagonal. That's a, a compositional choice that you can make too. As I notice that things are floating up, uh, kind of moving on the diagonal. So I'm accentuating that with a few lines, which is a very common thing that I do. Okay, so as I look at this painting, it is it was done on RFK Reeves paper. And I'm looking at it in terms of my composition and I'll tell you the things that I really love. I love, this was a mistake. It's very, very thick application of paint. Let me hold that up so that you can see that. And it actually just like came right out of the tube like that. And I love the way that kind of holds up there. But I can see, this is almost done, but I can see two things that I talk about a lot um, when I'm talking about composition that I noticed after the fact, these two shapes are pretty much the same. And so they bother me. So that's what I'm gonna work on. And also, um, this color is, is really great, but I don't see it anywhere else. So I'm gonna try to find that. And uh, that's all I'm gonna do on this piece. I'm gonna try to finish it up, but um, Okay, let me, let me get to work. And I'm working with Vitalo Green 
uh, cobalt teal and Prussian blue. And I've got my galkide I'm mixing. I stand totally corrected. I can't remember who in class asked me about this, but can you mix galkide and cold wax? And why, yes, you can. It makes a really fluid mark. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. Um, I wish I could have you see this. Oh, I can't really do more than this. Okay, so I'm kind of dipping my brush in. I have got some clean <clears throat> Gamsol, cleanish. Okay, and I'm gonna just dip this in here. And here's the thing about, this is pretty, pretty dry. I mean, to the touch, it's barely coming up off of my finger, but okay. So I'm just gonna come in here with very light, light touch. And I'm going to see what I can do about this without affecting it too much because I really do like the way this came out. <clears throat> and I know myself, I can easily just start a whole process all over again. I don't wanna do that here. So I'm mixing my colors and then I'm floating them in the galkide mix with the cold wax. I know what I'm missing. I need this color too to get this kind of deep green. The underpainting on this one, yes, I know this underpainting was one that I did as a demonstration, like a quick do cold wax on paper demonstration on YouTube. And I looked at it and I just thought, well, you know, it was pretty, pretty vacuous. There wasn't much going on with it. And so I thought, well, this is gonna be a fantastic underpainting. So that's what I've done. Yeah, so I wanna just see what I can do to change this shape. Even I don't like this when I think about the straight line here, <clears throat> as I've said before, there are no straight lines in nature, almost very few. So I wanna see if I can't break that up a little bit. That's already better. Pulling out my handy RF pigment sticks to just correct some things without getting too crazy. I didn't like that line there. Making sure that this is not hitting the center. I like that much better already. I have to stand up and see it. This shape really bothers me. I like this one. This one's not, it's not happening. I'm gonna pull in a little yellow. Bismuth Vanadate Yellow. Gorgeous. I'm just gonna mix that in, pull in my Galkide. When I created that first one, I worked really fast. It was done in about 20 minutes. I was excited when I was working on it, when I saw the potential.
picking up this tool. I'm just going to use a lot more cold wax and just keep working on this texture here. It's kind of cool. See what else I could do. Because again, I notice now that I look at it a little bit more closely, I don't really like these straight lines. I'll clean that up a little bit. I'm looking for this color. So it's coming from my um, Fatalo Green, a little bit of white, and a little bit of this um, ochre. Okay. I don't want to get too crazy with this. Maybe just a light touch. Okay, here's another composition problem. This one's come is harder than the other one. This and this are pretty much the same, so I need to decide. And I think my decision is gonna be bring it down, have less. I'm barely touching the paper. Barely touching it. Here's another bad line. Wow. I did some bad lines. I'm gonna see what happens if I use a charcoal, and see if it holds. And just see if I can get a nice line. Not easy, not, not easy. Okay, that doesn't work very well. but it broke up the line, so I'm gonna content myself with that. Oops, my mic just fell on the paint. Uh oh
You can see you can go from something very messy to something really pulled together. Class with me or uh, individual my next or doing critiques with me, go to my website and sign up for my newsletter at andreawoodell.com.